welcome. Welcome today to learn more about how 3D printing can change the way you feed patients. The objectives of today's program is to learn how to stimulate the senses with technology. Create better engagement in your patient resident food experiences and enhance your ability to get better digestion and absorption of nutrients for people with various ailments from cancer to Huntington's disease to Parkinson's disease. Have you ever wondered how you can produce beautiful looking and tasty food for your texture diets, for your purees? Did you ever wonder how you can help your staff with a tool that outputs consistency in visual and cooking? Was there something available that really, really did this? That is the fundamental of using a 3D printer. And so as you go through this journey today, think about those objectives. How can I use this to stimulate the senses? How can I have better engagement with my patient and my residents? And how can I up increase the absorption and the digestion through using a tool or resource like this in your environment, a 3D printer? I'm going to start explaining you uh, why uh, food printing makes sense and why uh, this is applicable to uh, what we are discussing today. So first of all, think that um, food printing is nothing different from uh, what happens in a food factory. So in a food factory, you take the, uh, the ingredients, uh, you shape them, you form them. In some cases, you cook them. In some other, some other cases, don't. And uh, that product uh, gets to the supermarket where you purchase it and, and you consume it. So essentially, um, even though the technology is not using the same name, uh, if you are eating anything from the supermarket that is pre-processed, uh, you are already eating uh, printed food. So what we did is uh, to take what happens in a factory and shrink it to a kitchen factor. So you can have a kitchen appliance that produces the same process uh, in the consumption point. And uh, why would you do that? The, the uh, reason why this makes sense is because it helps you uh, do food personalization, adapt the food to every single uh, eater, every single patient or every single guest you may have. And personalization uh, may mean things like adapting textures, creating shapes, adapting to different tastes, adapting the nutritional content, adapting the portion size to whatever you want or need to eat that day, and even taking care of the allergens in, in food. So that's fine, but how do you put the uh, food in a, in a food printer? So you would use uh, some sort of containers. What you see on the screen are stainless steel, uh, recyclable and possible to use many times. And uh, you can also use one use capsules. Uh, we prefer to use uh, the stainless steel ones because the impact on environment is less and also you can use your ingredients but for some businesses and for some people, it's uh, preferable if they are looking for a convenience factor to use pre-filled capsules. In this case, um, we work with food brands like PepsiCo and uh, we are not a food brand and we are not selling the food and, and our business is not on the food. So we are not going to try to convince you or anybody that you have to buy any food from us. You can use your own ingredients, fresh ingredients, or you can buy them from whoever you trust. So what is important to also know is uh, regarding the sanitation and the safety of the device is that only the uh, capsule and the plate are in contact, in direct contact with the food. So that means that uh, these uh, elements are the only ones that are going to be touching your food which means that after using the, uh, the, the device, you only have to take care of cleaning these capsules and cleaning the plate, which may be yours. And uh, then there is no other maintenance required on the device. There is no need to use a special products to, uh, to clean it. So it's very simple and easy to, to keep. We are going to see here a few examples of uh, dishes prepare with Houdini. So you will see that there are like uh, different textures, 
uh, let's say, normal dishes you, you would eat on a daily uh, basis or some things that are created by chefs and are more like special. And uh, you can also see that there are different textures you can you can work with. And, and some of them are especially dedicated to people with some food related disease, diseases um, that could be uh, dysphagia, uh, cancer related diseases and, and some others as uh, Marsha mentioned. So all these foods are uh, created by our customers and uh, those include chefs, hospitals, catering companies. And of course, um, once you have a 3D printer in your hands, it's more about what you think you want to do with it than what is available in the, in, the, in the device at this very moment. So recipes are not limited to whatever the creator of the 3D printer envisions. It's more about the chefs, it's more about the user who decides what they are going to be creating. You would use that in a hospital environment or in a care environment because you can create a different experience for the people eating the, or having this kind of need. So what you see on the left side uh, would be more like what they are offered normally, so it's kind of a puree. And uh, what you see on the right side is something that resembles the food that what someone without any kind of disease would eat. So like we, we can say is real food. So at the end of the day, the, uh, the impact on, on uh, the people having this uh, access to this experience is that they, uh, they eat more because it's more appetizing. They have better mood and also they recover faster in, in uh, most of the cases. So what is the, uh, the, uh, one of the main drivers why this is, is a need and is going to become uh, a need in the future as well? So for example, in, you see some figures on, on the slide, but in, in Europe, we have like uh, 10 million people, uh, elderly people that has dysphagia and these people don't have any product that is especially uh, adapted to the needs is not targeting the needs. So they have to adapt and, and uh, eat whatever they can find in the supermarket, or if they have some kind of support, they, they can uh, eat whatever they are offered. What you see on the right side is uh, examples of dishes we, we have created together with some uh, care centers and, and some hospitals. And uh, what you, what you would see is that these issues, besides the uh, visual appearance and, and uh, being more appetizing, is that you can embed in them um, extra nutrients you may need, like iron or uh, vitamins, or you can also, uh, in some cases, add even the, the drugs. So it makes a whole different experience for these, uh, for these people. Um, our experience um, is, is kind of surprising. Uh, in some cases, in some of the customers we have, uh, the patients take the knife to, to eat this food. So the, the brain really is telling them what they see on the plate is different from a mushy bowl of puree. And they are like eager to try and eager to test. And uh, also some feedback we, we have received is that families uh, that try these and, and then they stop for whatever reason receiving this kind of experience, they start complaining. So really um, it's a change in the experience and they appreciate when, the, when their family uh, members that are, have these kind of limitations can have access to this kind of uh, better eating or better experience eating. One of the uh, main uh, worries, I would say, or main uh, uh, drivers in, in uh, hospital or when we are taking care of people that has some kind of dependency is that you have to somehow track and, and control what is their nutritional intake. So um, what you can do with one, uh, with Houdini or, or uh, 3D printers in general is you can uh, connect them uh, to the internet. Those are connected devices and you can keep track on, on what every single person is uh, having every day. So uh, you, you don't mm, 
you can avoid having something like is uh, more average for depending on the illness, and you can prepare something that is really targeting this uh, dispersion. So we don't we don't create uh, diets. Diets are created by dietitians and, and food service directors, and uh, in of course we can we can advise on on textures and and uh, some elements to to use, but it's not our duty and it's not uh, what we control what the uh, what the patients are are taking. So this is uh, stays in the hands of the hospitals or the care centers, and uh, that means that uh, is a tool for these uh, uh, people to control what's happening with with the patients, even when the patients are going home in some cases. So that allows you to remotely control to uh, what what's going on with your patients and, and keep track or, of the diets. The other advantage of having all this uh, information available, and, and uh, you will see it later on, um, easy to use interface, is that you don't have, you don't need to retrain staff every time you, you, you have uh, new people coming on board. You don't have to train them on textures, you don't have to train them on, on, on diets. Normally, uh, using uh, Fudini takes half an hour training, and then you, kept, uh, you can start going on. Um, so what you see are now are pictures of actual customers, actual experiences. And uh, we have been working with uh, customers in, in Asia, in Europe, and, uh, and, and in the USA, of course. And uh, we have been awarded uh, projects to work with cancer patients. We are uh, working with also with elderly care in a different project. And uh, we are working with a number of uh, hospital, uh, um, elderly care, and uh, even in some cases, to more catheters if, if you want. So um, uh, depending on, on uh, the customer we are working with, uh, we can have different interfaces and, and the main role, the main, let's say, provider normally is a partner that the hospital trusts and uh, they, we, we are just providing a part of the solution. So in some cases, our customers, uh, and that's part of our experience, prefer to use their own kitchen, their ingredients, and add Fodini as another tool, integrate that into the processes, and then the uh, same structure they have, the same kitchens they have, just with an, another extra uh, part of the process, they uh, integrate that in the whole chain. But in, in some other cases, especially in, in Asia, they prefer a turnkey uh, service, a subscription service. And uh, that service would include prefilled capsules, as mentioned, from, from a, a food brand they trust. And, uh, that deliver completely as, as a solution. So they don't need to bother about, um, in some cases, not even creating the, the diet, but is, is in uh, uh, only a few of them. Um, so the, uh, as mentioned, what, what uh, we do is, uh, or our role depends very much on the needs and, and the model uh, of the uh, hospital or the care center behind uh, or using the solution. So it's, it's, uh, we have a flexible approach to that. And uh, the important thing is that uh, it adapts to the need of every uh, single customer. So one of the things and or two of the things that the they, uh, customers around the world have in common is that those customers are looking for a positive uh, return on investment. Uh, not necessarily on, on a cost and, and a revenue base, so not necessarily monetary, which is also very relevant, but also uh, from a more like emotional point of view. So one of the things that all these people is looking for, and one of the things that probably is, is uh, lacking in, in many places is returning the dignity to the patient, returning the, the dignity to those people that have disabilities or difficulties to access, to access the, uh, the, the food and, and accessing the, the right way to uh, relate to, to the food. 
Um, another aspect that is very relevant for us is sustainability. One of the things we we working and, and promoting is uh, finding ways to minimize the food waste. So of course, when you use a food printer, you can exactly print the portion you, you, you need, the portion size you need, and the amount of food you need. But another relevant point for us is uh, on the production side. So using uh, parts of the food that otherwise would uh, get wasted. In, in what you're seeing on the screen is uh, an experience we are doing, a project we are doing with the uh, fishing industry in Iceland. So they, they can use the bycaptures and they can use all these uh, parts of the fish that uh, cannot be uh, offered to, to a customer or so in the market because they are not so nice looking or they are too close to the bone. And they produce perfectly fine uh, foods with all the nutrients that are appealing to the uh, to the people. In this case, they are addressing it, um, the kids market, so that they want to help them get uh, getting familiar with the uh, with eating fish, and um, that's one of our main goals as well. This is part of the uh, sustainable development goal of the uh, United Nations number twelve images. So if you look around these images, things like corn on the cob where a patient wouldn't normally be not able to eat will now have the ability to consume some of that comfort food. Um, a child in a child's ward, spinach quiche dinosaurs, um, the infusion of um, different even sushi and then having something that's different textures according to the you know, the International Dysphagia Diet Standardization Initiative methods. You'd be able to set up templates that are actually would be consistent every time and be efficiency. Um, and therefore have your patient and your residents have a dignity and also get more infusion of nutrients. Um, you know, looking at this, this stimulates definitely your sense of uh, your senses, your eye appeal, um, these an emotional connection to some of these foods. And so therefore, you know, food is food is, you know, basically a quality of life issue. And so when I look at this, I look at what dishes can I make, it doesn't have to be what's on here, but whatever dishes you make, and how can I make it look as close to the food as possible. The other thing is when they were saying about sustainability, um, one of the things that intrigued me about the sustainability was the idea of using um, fish incorporating into foods, which is very hard for a lot of a lot of these textured diets to get that um, kind of um, that nutrient thing they can freeze, and also the idea of having fish again, because again it's it's more cumbersome to work with, and so the idea of using um, to eat it in a seafood in a fun, tasty way, and using maybe parts of the fish or the, the fish that um, you typically perhaps. Um, you cut away at three ounces, you'll be able to use it. It's still the quality of it. The other thing is like ugly fruit and vegetables. You now have an ability to use this. Um, we're talking about the space here, but you certainly can use it in um, retail and catering and other components. So you're using the 3D printer not only to give you productivity and efficiencies from a labor point of view where you can have people in front of the house where they need to be and have, a, in a sense, technology or robotics do it behind the scenes but now you have the ability to use it in different aspects of your facilities um, and, and show it um, the ROI is a lot better in that component. Um, also, you know, food is medicine, as you know, and we, when we talk about this, there's a lot of controversy, but food can be medicine, and so obviously infusing some of the information or some of the, the nutrients or supplements, how about supplements that you sometimes can't, or sometimes you have to have thickener maybe the ability to use some of that in the process of printing. Um, here's a quote from Laura Robinson, um, University of Utah. She, was, she said, with Kadini, we are in the process of printing eye-appealing and flavorful creations from our own recipes to serve our patients on dysphagia diet. We realize that we've only scratched the surface of what Kadini can produce and look forward to an exciting and creative future with 3D printed food. As well as we have, so, you know, think about the possibilities of it. If people, if you give people food like this, they eat more, better moods, faster recovery um, in a lot of these components. Um, and a lot of people have asked me, well, 
how we do, to use it's really like simply like a, simply like in a sense like your Michael. It's a very simple process of doing it. Um, it's just and again, it's the efficiency of doing the overall of that. Remember this. We talked about at the beginning the journey of looking at what your objective is. If you can increase portion control, you can lessen waste, you can use labor efficiency, and you can cut costs in a way, enhance hygiene and sanitation and contamination, especially with COVID now. If we can minimize how many people are touching and handling if it's in a tube, and then you're not manipulating it as much, we increase the chance of a health, getting food healthier there and decrease the chance of any kind of contamination. So it's all about the experience. Consumers demand more, no matter who you are, no matter what level of dysphagia or you know illness. People want safe food. They want timely service. They you know they want to create balance and they want things to be personalized with whether they have swallowing difficulties or not. They just want to be treated with dignity.